So I'm Justin Ellis, lecturer in criminology. So I'm Kate Senior, I'm a, a lecturer in anthropology. And we are, this part of what we're doing today is we're going through the uh, Mervyn Janet Copley collection, the diaries that, uh, that Mervyn Janet wrote. So the, the original focus of the project was looking into police queer community relations in Newcastle, say from about 1950 to 1980. But what we very quickly learnt through going through the diaries and a lot of the newspaper clippings that, that, um, that they archived is that there's a whole range of potential here and a whole range of narratives that we probably never would have imagined. So this is really the big, this is the discovery phase of mm -hmm. going through the diaries in particular, because we're, we're, I think we're the first to actually go through the diaries in any detail and, and, and look for some of those stories and bring them to life. So um, that's where we're up to at this stage. So it's an exciting stage, but slightly daunting because there's a hell of a lot of material, but there's a whole lot of opportunity mm. as well. And I think what these archives present is it's like um, doing an anthropological study but going back in time and so what are they doing because they're so extensive and so complete in the way that they collect information that they can build up a, a, a picture of 1964 or 1965 that you could actually put yourself back into uh, and that's a really rich experience and that means that we've got all these opportunities to ex you know to think about the intersections between our own work and what is actually coming through in these diaries so for me, it's been just this voyage of discovery because, you know, came in to work with Justin on this project, but I've found so many intersections with my own work in remote Indigenous Australia that I'm actually finding the names of, of relatives, of people I work with, and pictures of them that they've probably never seen. And that's incredibly exciting. And, and I've also appreciated the commonalities between the period that we're looking at, so the 1950s through to the 1970s, the diaries end, mm. but things like, uh, particularly coal and steel because we're in Newcastle, but the things like the little power station, uh, and they, they're, they're incredibly into political economy, um, land use, land reclamation, so the, um, the connection to Newcastle and those narratives continue on change shape, come back to life, fade away, market-driven forces, all of those kind of things. I find all of that fascinating. Food. Food is menu, wonderful. <laughs> a menu here from the Spears Point Hotel. Uh, and Merv and Janet even have a, a Cook's Hill pub tour where mm. they're going through and they're listing all of the licensed premises extant and ones that had been demolished. So there's a whole range mm. of opportunity to also bring the archive alive through contemporary walks, talks. Mm exhibitions and I'm using the plural here a lot Kate and it yes, sounds like this we're going to do it. this is forever really isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but it's also just getting to know them mm. through the diaries is, has been probably the most rewarding aspect mm. of, of this part of the project so far oh and the fact that they traveled so extensively in a way that yeah most Australians would never do they traveled the outback they did it on buses and they went to sort of out of the way places that nobody ever goes and, you know, and they document these places and you know, they traveled up to up to Cairns by bus through central Queensland nobody does that you know they went up to Darwin by bus and they document every step of the way you know from the price of the beer to to you know what the agricultural produce is so you know everything that they see they describe the initial project was this but we found mm. that the, the the archive is actually so rich that it intersects with so many of our projects yes. that we could actually be here forever well yes. this is this is stuff that i have been looking for for years and who would have thought i mean i've got applications to go into the archives in Melbourne, in Sydney, in Darwin to try and get this material. Who would have thought it was sitting here in Newcastle Library? So then I think the next stage is to go through a, a section of the archive called a sunburned country, or a boy from a sunburned country, I think it is. Mm. And that's, I think it's a condensation of the diaries. And it looks like that was going to be written up as a, as a novel no, or a, a novelette or, or a travelogue. And Justin, even the um, little screenshot you sent me before had the name of the taxi driver. Oh, did it? <laughs> like, this is where I, I've been, so, so, Anne, you've been, you've been a recipient of a part of the discovery process. I've been sending people, if I come across their birthday, I send them a photo of what's, mm. what was in the diary. And because you mentioned the Kerthoys yeah. and their, their potential relationship with the, the, the union movement in Newcastle. So, the other, I guess the other point for us is that neither of us are from Newcastle. Mm. So it's also been a phenomenal discovery mm. of, of Newcastle and it's amazing to be able to give that back 
in the myriad ways that we might do that.